Hello everybody, it's Murray here and welcome back to my channel M Stuart Paintings. On today's a Sunset Landscape Acrylic Painting Tutorial, we're going to learn how to paint this gorgeous piece. We're going to teach you how to paint a sunset, how to paint clouds, how to mix and realistic colours to create depth and distance in your work, how to create light and shade using highlights and shadows, so you can paint this super realistic country road painting. So, let's get into it. So a really nice and easy tutorial today, we're going to need the following colours, they are titanium white, cad yellow, luminous orange, cad orange light, sap green, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, iris purple, burnt umber brown and ivory black. Now I've got a burnt sienna stained canvas that I've used two furs to create some sky, we're going to have some tree lines and a mountain in the bottom third. We're going to create a gorgeous sunset here in the background. We're going to have a nice mountain in which we're going to use colours to push back into the distance. We're going to have some trees in the distance and we're going to use colour. I'm going to teach you how to mix colours to create depths. And then we're going to have this lovely country road or country dirt road. And we're going to have some trees in the foreground and some long grass. So I, you can pause the video and you can copy down the outline if you feel free to do so. And we'll get cracking with the painting. So like always, we always start from the back, so we're going to paint the sky. So the first thing we're going to do, we're just going to put a central point, and we're just going to use titanium white and create a little circle, and that's going to be our sun. Now we want to create a nice sunset landscape painting, so what we're going to do, we're going to take some luminous orange and some cad orange light, and we're going to mix them together. Now the luminous orange is really vibrant, so you don't need much. And all we're going to do, we're just going to create a glow around the sun. So we're basically just creating a little circle around the sun. So if you think the sun as a big ball of light around the sun is going to be incredibly vibrant in colour. So that's why we're using really warm colours in the luminous orange and the cad orange light. And we're just coming across into the sky because you get this lovely glow in the sky when the sun is setting. And we're just going to come either side of the nice circle. And then on the actual horizon, it's going to be a tad darker. So we're going to use a cool colour. I've put all the cool colours on the um, right hand side and all the warm colours on the left. So it's nice and easy for everyone to see. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to mix some cad orange light and a tiny bit of luminous orange into some cool purple. And I'm just going to add lots of white to make it really pastel. So if you imagine by adding white it makes a colour really pastel and by adding a little bit of purple you can see it makes it kind of grey and a bit cooler. So if you think orange is really really nice and warm and purples are really really cool. So all we're doing we're just creating on the horizon a nice sort of colour that sort of fades off into the distance. Now as you can see there's a big jump between hot and cold. So all we're going to do, we're just going to go back to the warm colour and we're using our brush, we're just going to create little X shapes and blend the two colours together. And what it should do, in a really quick, easy way, that it only took a few minutes, is create a nice horizon that looks like it's fading off into the distance and looks nice and wispy. So now we're going to go up into the sky, we're going to get some cad yellow and some cad orange light. We're going to mix them together. More yellow than orange please, so it's nice and golden. We're going to add a tiny bit of brown, just a tiny bit. Brown's really good for sucking out colour and making things look more realistic. And then we're just going to add a little bit of purple, and purple makes it look darker. So we're trying to get a golden colour, but it's a bit forceful, so we're just going to add some white to it to make it nice and pastel, because we want everything to be nice and pastel. And we're just going to create this nice sort of dark yellow. And again, we're just blocking in. Don't worry if it looks scruffy. You just want to use quite a large brush. And we just want to block in up to that orange. So as you can see, as the sky is really bright around the sun, where the sun is setting, it sort of cools down as it gets further away. So all I'm doing, I'm just mixing the previous colour for the orange that we used around the sun. 
So we should have three colors here. And again, just like we did with the bottom color, I'm just really gently blending it into that yellow. So I'm blending at the bottom, blending at the top. Just so all the transitions from one color to another looks really soft and wispy and you hardly notice it. So you've got three different colors. Oops, got a hair on my canvas. But they should look like they're blending into it. Now, the sky goes cold and goes cooler, and we want to use cooler colors like blue, but the problem is, is if you go from yellow to blue, you get green. So what we're going to do, we're going to mix some yellow and purple together, and it should create a nice gold color. So yellow and purple. We're going to add some white to the mix. And we're just going to add a bit more purple than yellow to make it nice and gray. So we should have a cooler color because we're getting further away from the sun. And we're just going to lay that on. Now I think my brush was a little bit dirty. I think I picked up a dirty brush. Rookie mistake. So mine came out a bit too dark. But don't worry because it's acrylic paints and acrylic paints are perfect for beginners and intermediate painters. They're very forgiving so we can dry the work or just blend it over the top. So as we get cooler as we go up, we're going to introduce some more blues now. So we're going to get cerulean blue, which is really nice and light. We're going to add plenty of white to that cerulean blue. And we're going to add a dot of brown again, just to make it more realistic. So as I say, brown's really good. Just a dot, like a pinprick. And where we had that dirty brush, we're going to just blend into it. But that colour that we just laid before, what it does is it sort of acts as a buffer so our blues and our yellows don't mix and we shouldn't get a green bit so it's kind of like a little easy trick you can use purples and yellows before you go into the blues and then you shouldn't ever get a green sky so look, as i say critics are really forgiving you can just paint over them so if you ever make a mistake you can always just dry your work with a hairdryer and then just use the next color just to blend it so again, as we go further away, we're getting cooler. See, we're getting more blue and cooler. We're going to mix cooler colors as we go into the top of our painting. So we're going to use a cooler blue now. So we're going to mix some cerulean blue and we're going to add cobalt blue, which is a lot darker. We're going to still add plenty of white to make it pastel. And we're going to add a little bit more cerulean blue than cobalt blue because we still want it really nice. And we want to add just a dot of that brown again, just to make it look more earthy and natural. So look, we've got a light blue and a dark blue. And dark blue, what we're going to do is use it to frame our painting. So a good thing with all your paintings, if you can nice and easily frame your work, as in make the corners slightly darker, what it does is it just naturally frames your work so your eyes look towards the middle. It's a little trick that I learned from Bob Ross many, many years ago, and it really, really works. So look, all we're doing, look, we're just coming down into the cerulean blue. So we've got this nice darker blue, and it just frames your painting. If you imagine this painting framed, it would look really, really pretty. And we're just going to go back to the previous colour. My, my pads, my palette's a little bit dry, so I'm just going to add a little bit of water. Believe it or not, it's still very nice. It was raining today, but it's still very hot here in the UK and look, all we're doing we're creating X shapes and we're just mixing the two colors together again just like we did with the warm colors at the bottom just to make the transitions and the changing color look really really fluid so we've got this lovely pushed background we've got this glow around the Sun and then we've got these cooler colors from this buffer into the lighter cerulean blue and then into the cooler cobalt blue so i'm really happy with the background sky so if you dry your work we'll crack on and we'll create some clouds so we're going to use this color here which was purple um orange and a little bit of luminous orange so purple cad orange light and a little bit of luminous orange and then plenty of white to make it really nice and pastel so it's basically the two oranges and a little bit of purple just to cool it and make it more gray and tiny bit of brown again just to suck a bit of the color out and we should have this nice warm gray 
And all we're going to do, we're just going to use a fine liner and we're just going to create some really far off wispy clouds. So if you think it's the same colour as the bottom of the horizon, just remix because my palette's a bit dry because of the hot weather. And all I'm doing, I'm just creating some little wispy clouds that are low. I'll zoom in for you in a minute so you can see them closer. But if you dry your background sky before you put any clouds on, if you make a mistake, you can always use a baby wipe and just wipe away your clouds and your background sky will still be all lovely underneath. So it's a good little insurance policy. Anytime you move on in an acrylic painting, if you just dry your work before you move on to the next stage, if you don't like an area, you can always just wipe it away and the underneath painting will still be there. So look, I've zoomed in for you so you can get a closer look. All we're doing, we're creating really pastel clouds. Now the reason we're creating them pastel, we don't want to use really harsh colours, is because acrylics dry a little bit darker. So we want to make these colours really nice and pastel so they look further back. If we use really harsh colours, so say we added lots of greys and blacks and stuff, it would bring it closer towards the viewer and we want to push this sunset really far back into the distance so it looks like we're walking down our country road towards that big mountain and towards the sunset so just take your time i'm just going to add a tiny bit more purple to the mix just a tiny bit just as we move away from the sun just like our background sky the clouds are going to be a little bit cooler so again we're using purples which is a cool color just to imply that but it's still got loads of warmth in that mix because it's still got lots of orange and it's still very pastel so we're just putting some little ones diagonally going off into the corners all I do is load up my brush with not so much paint, just a little bit of paint, and I just smear it against the canvas. And then I just have little breakaway ones. So wherever I've done a big one, look, I just have a few little ones looking like they've just broken away, all nice and fluffy. So look, just create little shapes, looks like they've broken away. There we go. So now I'm zoomed out, you can sort of see it taking shape. So look, where you have a big one, just have a few straddling ones that are broken off. So look, just have a few, just little dots, and impressions on the canvas. And cause all the colors match, it looks kind of real already, doesn't it? You think we've not even 15 minutes in, look how real this is starting to look. Super easy, perfect for beginners. So there we go. So we've got this lovely pushback background sky and we've got the lovely clouds to mix. I really like the horizon. So now we've got this mountain that is still really far off into the distance. It's, it's a long way off down our country road. So we're going to use pastel and oh, got way too much water on my brush there. Excuse me. I'll just wipe it away. We're going to use pastel purples and blues to create distance. So cobalt blue and purple is really, really good to make things look far off into the distance. So we're just gonna add some purple and some cobalt blue together. And we're gonna add our brown to make it nice and earthy and realistic. Love a bit of burnt umber brown. So we're gonna put that all together and it should make it more gray. We're gonna add a tiny bit of black just to make it just a tiny bit, see that? Just to make it a bit darker. And then we're just gonna add some white again to make it pastel because we want it in the distance we don't want it to be too far forward we're going to add a little bit of orange just for some heat because you've got to remember it's by the sun so it's going to be a little bit warmer because it's far off underneath that shining sun and a tiny bit of purple so we should have this nice sort of gray pastel color 
And what we're going to do, we're going to create sort of bubbles. We don't want your mountain all square, so we're going to deliberately make it all bubbly and rough, because mountains are. And if I zoom in for you, so we're going to load up our brush, look, and we're going to make the edges a little bit bubbly, not all straight. We don't want it really square and robotic. We want it nice and bubbly. And we're just going to block her in. And that pastel colour, what it should do, because it's not too dark, it should push this mountain far off into the distance. So if you're ever painting landscapes, cobalt blue is a great colour to use to create far off things into the distance, like trees and mountains, canyons, anything like that. Because it's not too dark and it's not too light it tricks your eye and it makes it look like it's far off into the distance so just take your time block her in you can use a big brush if you want sometimes with acrylics like you can see here the paint doesn't take to the canvas so you can always dry it and just go over it twice just so it makes it look nicer now underneath the sun it's going to get plenty of heat so I'm going to use the cloud colour and the horizon colour just to shade it. So look all I'm doing, while that paint is wet I'm just shading it. And all I'm doing I'm using a warmer colour than the mountain to imply the light and the heat of that sun on the base of that mountain. Now as, as I was just saying look sometimes with acrylics because you're painting on a canvas it doesn't take look it's a big big mark so look if you dry your work and just now it's dry look give it a second coat of paint the paint seems to stick a lot better I don't know why it's just a weird little trick so if your paint is not going down fully on your canvas just dry your work and give it a second layer of paint and it will take to the canvas much easier so look all we're doing look we're gently blending it into that color now it's dry and all I'm doing, look, I'm easing off as I go to the left and to the right. I'm easing off on the pressure. And I'm just gently blending it. So it looks like the sunlight is going into this mountain. So we've got this lovely blocked in mountain. And I'm just going to get the darker colour. So mine's dried again. So purple and blue. A little bit of brown. Dot of black and some white. And I'm just going to block her back in a little bit here. Because as I say, sometimes when it dries, it looks a bit scruffy. So a little bit more brown. And if you give it a second coat of paint, look, it just takes all the brush marks out. If you get any horrible brush marks, and it looks a bit ropey. Just take your time. And just reapply the paint and it should look a lot more smoother and nicer and prettier. So either side I'll just make it a little bit darker so we've got this nice heat in the middle and then it goes into the middle colour and then the darker and it should, now we zoomed out, look realistic. We're going to use the cloud colour and the horizon colour again and we're going to swap to a fine liner and all we're going to do is create little divots in our mountain to imply bits of the mountain that are getting light and to create the illusion of terrain. So all I do is I lay the paint down with a fine liner. So look, I just get a fine liner and I just create sort of little shapes. And because they're really harsh, because that, that color is quite bright, once I've laid it, I just use my finger just to smudge it. Look, and just push it back. It just makes it look softer. The highlight isn't as harsh. So all I'm doing, I'm just creating little divots. I'm leaving plenty of the background color to shine through. And again, it just looks like terrain. It just looks like parts of the mountain. It's just to make your mountain look more realistic and not just to have one block color. So as these highlights are really, really subtle, they all match the light. So they create the realism. 
So if I zoom in for you, as you can see, so look, we're going to load up our little fine liner. And then on this dark part here, look, we're just going to create these little grooves. So it looks like hillsides in the far distance. But they're quite harsh. Look, you can see how harsh it looks. That, that color, that orange mix is really, really bright. And we want to push these hillsides really far into the distance. So look, we're going to lay the color down. And then we're just going to use our finger, look, to wipe it. And it kind of smooths it. Look, it just pushes it back. So let's have a little bit connecting here at the bottom, just where the gap. Just smooth it out. And then if we zoom out, look how realistic that looks. That looks really realistic. And we've got this nice dark corner here and this nice dark corner and this nice glow around the sun. So see it gets darker as it moves away from the sun. So now we're just going to block in some of the trees and we're going to use pastel colors again to push these far off trees because these trees are still really far off into the distance past our country path. So we're going to get some brown and some cobalt blue. So brown and blue together create a really nice off color that is really good for creating shadows, but it's really harsh. Look, it's really dark. So it's really good to look for creating sort of silhouettes. So if I block in this little tree here in the foreground, bits, we don't want it that dark because it will bring it forward. So we're just going to make it a bit more pastel. So as I was saying, pastel colors push things back. So I'm just going to add some white and a little bit more brown to make it more gray. And as you can see, look, just by adding more white, we can make these tree lines in the distance a little bit further back. So I'm just going to add a tiny bit more blue and brown, just as a little bit darker, not too dark. We don't want it as dark as the ones in the foreground. We want to push them back. So all I'm doing, I'm creating splats just to give the impression of far away trees. So no detail, it's just all in the color. Just creating the illusion of far away bushes and shrubs and trees. As I say, that color should push them back into the distance. And as I say, acrylics always dry darker. So it's always safer to put a lighter color. And if you need to, we can darken it up later. So look, here in the corner, where this corner is still wet, the paint's not taking. So we can make it a little bit darker just by adding more blue and brown. Just push that into the corner. So there we go. And as I say, as we move towards the viewer, as we come closer, we want to get darker. So let's just block in this area here. This could be like a little sort of hedge line in the distance, sort of connecting these fields. Oh, I feel like I want to go for a nature walk now, <laughs> painting this. So look, if I zoom into you, you can see now like this pastel blue is not as dark as the one where we didn't have any white in the foreground. So it pushes it back. So it's still really nice and pastel. So creating all those far away trees. Let's say there's no detail, we're just creating little splodges. Try to have them all different shapes and sizes. So have some big, some small. So let's make this area a bit bigger. And again, just like the mountain, we want it quite bobbly. We don't want it all the same height. So try to have some big bushes, some little little bushes, just so you have a little bit of variety. So look here in the foreground, look, if we just mix more brown and cobalt blue together, and not any white, so brown and cobalt blue, look how much darker this is. Look, it's a lot darker. So what it does is it brings all these bushes and trees forward 
brings them closer towards the viewer. And what it does as well is in combination with the other trees we just laid, it pushes them back. So it's the color, same technique. We're just making these ones a bit bigger because they're closer to the viewer for perspective. And these ones are a little bit closer as well, aren't they? A tiny bit closer, so we're just gonna make these ones a bit darker. And again, the colors should trick your eye to create the realism. So if I zoom out, you can see it a bit different now. Look, so you've got, you've got this faraway mountain, you've got these faraway trees, and as we get closer, we're getting darker. So this tree in the foreground is gonna be even darker. So we're gonna mix some blue and some brown together to get that nice dark color. But now we're gonna add a little bit of black to make it even darker. So we've, sh we've kept our darkest darks to nearest the viewer, so into the foreground. And all I'm gonna do, using the fine line, I'm just splatting it away on my canvas. Just going back and forth, just to create the impression of a big bush here in the foreground, a big tree. So if you think this area is really far from that sunlight, so it's almost gonna be in the shade, it's gonna be like a silhouette. Hence we're using black. And while I've got that color, I'm just in the bottom corners. I'm just gonna shade in the bottom corners and make them nice and dark, especially here on the left, because that's where I'm gonna sign it. So I always want a dark color in the left-hand corner. So when I sign, I always sign in white. My signature, stands out against it so there we go so look we've got this pushback mountains and we've got this tree line and then we've got these trees that get darker as they come towards the viewer which tricks the eye so now we're going to work on the grass so we're going to have some nice grass in these fields so again just in the middle here we're going to have a warmer color because it's going to get in lots of sunlight so we're going to get this hooker green which is a really nice brown um, brown really nice green <laughs> and we're going to add some cobalt blue to it to make it nice and dark and we're just going to mix a second mix we're going to get our hooker green and we're going to get our cobalt blue again to make it nice and dark and then what we're going to do on the top version we're just going to get loads of the cad orange light and mix it in to make it more browner so by adding more orange, we're going to make it more warmer. So plenty of orange and you should get a more olivey color. There we go, it's more golden-y. So we've got a warm green and a cool green. So what we're going to do, we're going to use the warm green here under the sun. So the reason we've got plenty of orange in this green is because that's getting loads of heat and sunlight. So by adding orange, you can warm up this area. So if you think this area here is getting plenty of sunlight, it's gonna be nice and warm in color. So that's why we're using plenty of orange and heat in our highlights to make it look nice and in the light. So if we block in this area, just come down. I don't know why I'm using a fine liner to block this in. I should be using a bigger brush. <laughs> we'll swap over in a minute. And then just here on th this side, this would be getting quite a lot of sunlight, wouldn't it? Just this outer tip of this field. So again, we're just using this nice warm green just to block this area in. And then far off into the distance, we would normally use, again, pastel colors to imply far off into the distance. So just by adding a wee bit of white and blue, we can make that color look a lot more pastel. But when I laid it down here, it looks too pastel. I think it looks too um, saturated. There's not enough color in it. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more blue. Just a little bit more green. 
and we'll see it. Sometimes in painting, what you see in your head and what goes on the canvas don't match. <laughs> and it's only for experimenting. See, I think that's a bit too light. I think it's too pastel. So what we'll do, we'll lay it down and then we can change it in a minute once it dries. So as I say, acrylics are really cool. It's not like oils where we have to wait ages to change anything and it all mixed together and you get a big mush. So they're perfect for beginners. So what we can do is look, we'll just block it in for now and we'll come back to it. Give it five minutes and it'll be dry. Yeah, I think it's too, too pastel, it just doesn't work. But I like to leave all these things in the tutorials because I'm trying to show people, everyone, even me, who paints all the time, every week for you guys, um, you all make mistakes and the only way to learn is to sort of practice and figure it out. So look, I'm just using some of that warm green over the top and that looks a bit nicer, doesn't it? That looks a bit more realistic. Still nice and pastel. It looks a bit more realistic. And then I'm going to get the cool green, which was the hooker green and blue. And just like our mountains, look here on the left, this area is going to be much more in the shade. So that's why it's got no orange in this version of the green. It's just hooker green and cobalt blue. So it's a lot cooler. So by using the cooler green, and look, we'll swap for a bigger brush now, and we'll use that cooler green this area looks like it's in the shade so again by having warm colors around the sun such as yellows and oranges you can heat areas up and by having cool colors such as blues and purples you can cool areas down and make them look like they're in the shade so all i'm doing look, i'm just got green and blue and in this corner i'm just making it nice and cool far away from the sun, getting hardly any sunlight. So it's much cooler in colour and tone. I finally got a big brush, so this is a lot quicker, there we go. And we just blend her together. So I say, don't worry if it's scruffy at the moment, we can always work on this in a minute. We just want everything nice and blended. So as I say, you can go between the colours. Look, sometimes here, look, in this bit here, the paint's not taking. So sometimes you just need to dry it. So I'm going to get some orange and black. A little bit of blue. Orange, black and blue. Plenty of white to make it nice and pastel. And we're going to create a nice warm grey. So orange, blue, black and some white. And just here in the bottom of our country dirt road. We're just going to make a nice dark gray. So again, this area is gonna get hardly any sunlight, so it's a lot darker, it's a lot darker gray. And as we go towards the end of the path, down our country path, this area will be getting lots of sunlight. So we're gonna have more white to the mix to make it more pastel and a little bit of orange just to warm her up so the so the end of the path look it's a lot more in the light and we're just going to gently blend that into the darker cooler gray so look it's always the same principle it's just like the grass just like the mountains just like the clouds and look if we add some blue and black to that gray look we can make this area because blues are cold and cool remember we can make this area look like it's in the shade so we've got a cool color a middle color and a warm color so think of the three bears and their porridge hot middle and cool we're going to swap to a fan brush now and we're going to put some texture on our grass and we're just going to get some black we're going to get some cobalt blue and some of the green and we're going to mix it all together so we're going to make a dark shadow color and a fan brush does all the work for you so it's perfect for painting grass so you can either 
put it upright like I'm doing and create long grass. So again, here in the foreground, we're using this really dark color to imply long grass and shadow because this area would be in the shade. And the brush itself, you can get a fan brush for literally a pound or a dollar. Um, there's plenty of links now in my description box to things if you, anyone wants to have a look at brushes or paints or anything like that, just click on the description box for the video. And look, all we're doing, we're turning it sideways, we're just giving it little impressions so we're just trying to create, again, some texture. It's really, really subtle. It's just like when we did the mountains. It's just to imply detail in the foreground. And we're going to make this corner nice and dark because obviously we want to sign it here. So I want to make this area all in shade. And we want to frame our painting. So we want to make our corners nice and dark. And again, look, just by turning it on its side, look, we can create a little shadow here. This part of the long grass would be in the shade. So try to think where the light would be coming from and what areas would be not getting any light. So look, this area would have its back almost to the sun. And look, we can even use it to create little tufts of grass that are poking through our dirt country road. So our dirt road paintings coming along nicely. So just really gently texturizing our grass. As I say, the brush does all the work. Knowing what tools to have really, really helps you. And they're not expensive, as I say, they're like a dollar or a pound. So just buy a few for yourself. And it makes grass and leaves and all these things much easier to paint. So we're just gently applying some nice texture on our canvas. We can add a tiny bit of blue just here as we get closer towards the sun, just so it's not as harsh. Now I've just realized I put sap green when really I'm using hooker green. So my apologies at the beginning. I was saying sap green, but I've used a lighter green, which is hooker green. And then here, all I'm doing, I've just added a little bit more yellow and orange, just to add a little bit of heat. I'm still using my fan brush, but I'm just applying some texture with some light here around the sun. You could use sap green and you could just add a tiny bit of yellow just to make it a little bit lighter. So sap green is just a bit dark, I've just realized. So look, by using some yellow and orange in our green mix again, and using this texturized brush, we're just creating sort of the illusion of some of this long grass in these fields, getting some sunlight. And just like we did with the mountains, we're leaving little gaps. So the underpainting with all that texture and the darkness shines through. So look, all this area will be getting lovely sunlight, so it'll be nice and warm. And as we come down, they're going to be more in the shade. So if we get some blue and we add it to our dark green, look, we can make sort of an in-between, just like we did with the sky, like a bridge tone. By using blues, not blacks, we can still add these divots, but they're not as harsh. Just like our trees in the far off distance. So everything is looking really, really cool. We have blocked in our lovely sunset landscape acrylic painting and we've got this lovely country path and we've got our far off bushes and our mountains but everything's still a bit rough so we're just going to spend the next 10 minutes or so just putting all the fine detail now to make our painting look really really top notch. So we're going to mix some yellow, some white and some luminous orange to create a really vibrant peach tone. And then underneath where the sun is blazing, we're just going to add some highlights with a fine liner. So we're going to put some finishing touches to make our work a lot more professional. Because I know these tutorials are for beginners, but I really want to push people. And the only way to get better is to get out of your comfort zone and to test yourself. So I just want to make 
a little bit more improvements each week now because some of the, your work that you're sending me is absolutely amazing um, you can always tag me at M Stuart Paintings to show me your version of the tutorials. I love to shout them out, so please do. But I want to just show you more harder techniques now and make the tutorials a little bit harder each week so everyone who's following along at home gets better and better. So I'm just going to add a tiny bit of purple to the mix because if you think to the left and to the right, we're getting cooler. So I'm just making those highlights again, just a little bit cooler either side of the middle. It's the same principle. So now we've got these really bright highlights straight down the middle. We're going to mix some of our purple and blue and brown together to get that lovely far away gray. So there we go. We're just going to put some of our tree lined back where we blocked in our grass. And we're zoomed in like here, you can see it's all a bit scruffy. So we're just going to repaint them. So a lot of painting, as I say, it's just taking your time, seeing if you've changed an area to go back and just rework it. So look, where we added that green, we've kind of killed all our faraway bushes. So just by having the patience and the discipline just to go back, and rework areas or just spending 10 15 minutes on a painting makes a huge difference because the paint all comes together at the end so as I say try to make all your trees in distance different heights different shapes we don't want them all the same so look you can make some bobbly some short some big So we make a big one here in the corner. And then where our grass in the distance is really scruffy, I'm just gonna get some of that warm green that we mixed up, which was the green, yellow, and orange. And I'm just gonna make it nice and warm here because this will be getting lots of sunlight at the end of that country path. So I'm just making it nice and warm. This could be a little valley off into the distance. I'm just going to interlink this area. So as I say, just taking your time and going over areas. It's not hard, it's just, it's just patience. And then we're just going to mix some green and blue because my one's dried. Just to make a darker version, so green and blue, green and cobalt blue makes it nice and in the shade. Look, it's a lot darker. And we're just going to make this area a lot cooler and a lot more neater. And then we're just going to blend the two together just so the transition looks really pretty. So look, just going back and forth between the two colours. You can just make the transition a lot smoother. So you don't notice when one colour ends and one begins, you see. And as I say, with highlights, by going over a area twice just makes them much more vibrant. So we're going to get some cobalt blue and some brown to make that really nice dark colour. So brown and cobalt blue. We're going to put back these trees because they're looking a bit scruffy again. So again, just try and make them different heights. This could be a nice little hedge line just in between the fields. Yeah, at the bottom of the country road. I think I've made it a bit too blue, so I'll make it a little bit darker in a minute. 
we won't see. Sometimes, it, as I say, acrylics dry really dark. So sometimes when you're this zoomed in, it looks a lot lighter. And then when you take a step back, it looks darker once it's had a dry. And look, you can always do this trick. You can always take some of the background green and poke holes around your bushes. So if you don't like the shapes of them, you can always take some of the background color and just change it by poking holes in your trees. So as I say, there's nothing you can't fix. So if they're a bit too bobbly, just take some of the background green. And then this one, which is a bit scruffy, we're just going to get some orange and purple to create a burnt sienna. So orange and purple creates burnt sienna. So it's nice, really warm brown. And just on the very edges, I'm just going to make it a bit brown because these edges of the leaves would be getting quite a lot of sun sunlight, so they're almost bleached in the sun. So I'm just creating this nice warm orangey brown. I'm taking some of the background sky color that we mixed and I'm just poking some holes in. So again, just like we did just now with the trees in the fields, you can do that with leaves and trees in the foreground. You can just mix some of the background sky color and you can poke little holes just to make your tree look a bit different. So there we go. Now I put some black here, but I think black is really overpowering and I think it brings the tree too close. It makes it look too silhouetted. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to get some of this cool green, this greeny blue. I'm just going to poke some holes again just to make it a bit more texturized. And as I say, I think this black is too overbearing. I think it makes it look too cartoony. So I'll lay it down first. And then I think I'll go over it with some blue and brown just to make it look less harsh. So these are the areas of the tree that again, no sunlight. But look, if you just add a little bit of blue and brown over the top, it will take away that harshness of the black. So if you need to let it dry, just let it dry. Look, and just by adding blue and brown, it will just make it look not as harsh. So look, all I'm doing is just colouring in, and basically I'm just going over the top. And I'm using some of that blue and brown just here, just to create a nice shadow. So if you imagine this area would be creating a nice big shadow from that big bush. That tree would be cascading a nice shadow. And again, it's a good color just to use here in the corners to frame the painting. So just some blue, cobalt blue and brown. And as I say, as she dries, look, there's nothing you can't fix. Look, we can just glaze over the top of it and make that black look less harsh. I think that looks nicer. There we go, make a nice and bobbly And then if we zoom back out, it should look very realistic. So there we go, that looks much better. And the same here, I'm just going to darken up this one here in the foreground. Just to make it look nice and closer towards the viewer. So I've got my blue and brown and a tiny bit of black. And I'm just going to darken up again, just a bit of sh shadow here. So this would be making a little bit of shadow from the sunlight. And while we've got that color, we can just sort of glaze this corner. Make it nice and dark. Down towards the path. And then I'm just going to get the highlight colour. As I say, by just going over the top once or twice, you can make areas look much brighter. So where we've laid the dark, I'm just blending the light into it. 
So I'm just easing up as I come towards this dark corner. I've got my brush hardly touching it. And as I move towards the right, I'm pushing down a lot harder, so more paint will come on. So as I say, I'm just trying to work on the transitions from hot to cold, light to shadow. So as I say, it's pretty much intuition. Just take your time, try to make all these transitions really nice and seamless. And that will create the realism. And then I'm gonna get uh, a little bit of blue and brown, a tiny bit of black. So I'm just gonna make it a shade darker. Still got plenty of blue in it, so. And I'm just gonna outline this outer ridge just to make it look really nice and dark. So I'm just using a really fine liner. Having a really fine brush makes it a lot easier. Because you can do quite a lot of detail with such a small brush. And again, just here on our path, just gonna create some stones on our lovely dirt road. You get all sort of long grass where you've had a tractor or a, a truck come down it. You get sort of the grass in the middle where the wheels don't touch. So again, it's just adding all these little extra detail. And then I'm just going to make the path a little bit it's chunky here so it looks like it's fading out into the distance so I'm just using some of that green and I'm just getting a little bit of white and I'm just gonna make this area look like it's getting a bit of sunlight so I'm just using a tiny bit of white Again, just like the highlights on the mountain, I'm just smoothing it with my finger. Now, because this bit of the path is really in the sun, I'm going to get some yellow and orange. So yellow and luminous orange. I'm going to add a tiny bit of brown to it to suck a bit of the color out. And a tiny bit of green, just a tiny bit. And I'm just going to put some highlights here. So this area of the fields and the path are going to be getting really blaring sun sunlight. So I'm just using this really warm yellow and orange just to imply that. So I'm just making these highlights really, really harsh. And same on the grass here. This area will be getting lots of sunlight. And can you see by having the path, the sun and these highlights and the mountain right in the middle, it gives the viewer a focus point. So we've got this path leading you to these areas with all these highlights. And what it does is it draws your eyes into the middle. So a good rule of thumb when you're trying to come up with ideas of what to paint and compositions like this place isn't a real place. This is something I've just created out of my mind. Try to have focus points that the viewer can look into the paint and get lost into the paint, you see. So I'm just highlighting this area in the far distance. Again, just to imply the sun. I'm just easing up as I move towards the left. And what you can do, look, this is a little trick as well. You can create little sort of dots, and this could be the light coming through the leaves. So you get the sort of lovely sort of effect, like a reflection, where you get sunlight sort of beaming through the leaves and you get this sort of nice reflection onto the grass. 
So as I say, just try to think of nature itself and then try to recreate it. Go out in nature, take photos, sketch. It really, really helps your artwork if you know how it all works. Just really subtly making this area really bright. That is looking groovy. Easy peasy, this is. It's gonna make this area a little less harsh. I think that black is a bit overwhelming. And then just with some purple and blue, just some purple and blue, a tiny bit of brown. I'm just gonna make this part of the mountain a bit more in the shade, because again, look, this area is really far away. Whoops, got way too much water. It's really far away from the sun. So this area would be nice and cool. So we're just using cool colors to imply shade. I'm just making this part of the mountain a little bit darker. Just this outer ridge, you see how that works? Just as she looks in the shade. And again with our darkened corner, it all matches. I'm just gonna get a tiny bit of black and a fine liner. And I'm just gonna create some bubbles and a sharp ridge just down here. So I'm using my blacks only in the foreground so i'm saving my darkest darks to the nearest the viewer so imagine we're walking down this path it creates the realism because the darkest darks would be right in front of us and everything else in the distance would look kind of pastel and then i'm going to get a load of white and i'm going to get some luminous orange and a bit of cat orange light and a little bit of yellow. So white, luminous orange, cat orange light and a little bit of yellow. And we're gonna create the same glow, this nice warm orange on our path. So this area of the path will be getting beaming sunlight. So by using this nice warm orange, it just implies that so our grass all matches, our mountain all matches, our path all matches. And we can even use a tiny bit of that color just here on this outer ridge of this field, just to imply the harshness of the sun. Just here underneath her. She looks like she's getting bleached with all the sunlight, all that grass. And then I'm just going to get a little bit more luminous orange. And I'm just going to make this area a little bit brighter to match the glow. So all I'm doing, if you think of the painting, I'm trying to match what's in the sky with what's on the bottom. So look, I'm trying to make this orange match the glow of the sun. And it's nice and cool. So all the lighting, oh, it's all the same. And then just get some black and I'm just putting some divots in the road going down the path. Now we've got that orange in, I can put the detail over the top. It's just layering. And then just to finish her, I'm gonna get some blue and purple cerulean blue and a tiny bit of brown and lots of white so cobalt blue just to make it dark and purple some cerulean blue tiny bit of brown and lots of white and you should get that dark blue do you remember what we got at the beginning i'm just going to make the edges a little bit darker so i've just added a tiny bit purple and a little bit more cobalt blue to our mix just to make the edges a little bit darker. I'm just gonna try to 
to darken the corners and darken the edges and just blend it really gently. Sorry, it's a bit focused on my hand for some reason. And again, it's just to frame the painting and make it look like it's fading off into the distance. So just by using this cooler blue, because cobalt blue is cooler and purple is obviously cooler. And I'm just blending it into the dry canvas. So I'm just trying to frame the corners really. go just nice and gently just blend it all together and then once you've darkened the corners we're just going to get some purple and a little bit of the orange the cat orange light some white And we're just going to make it a little bit darker areas of the clouds so we're just going to make this a little bit more purple still got some heat from the orange but we're just going to make it a little bit darker so now we've created that nice dark corners we just want these dark clouds just to sort of all match the light So by using purples, we could just make all these areas a little bit darker. And it just pushes back our sky that we've just laid. So I'm just getting plenty of paint, I'm just going over the top of what we've already painted. Just making it a little bit darker. Still very pastel. So you can even just colour in some of the clouds. Look, you can just go over the top of this more cooler purple. So this area here, we're getting not as much light. This area here. But as we move towards the sun, we're just going to ease up. So we won't go any further than the middle. And just these ones, look, we're just colouring them in, just making them a little tad darker. And then in the very corners, just gonna add a little bit more of the cool purple. So cool purple and brown I'm just mixing together. Just making these areas a shade cooler and darker because they're getting hardly any light. So, just the tips of them, just as the clouds fade off into the distance, we just want them nice and cool. Just gently blend it all together. So we have some little float of ones here in the corner. And the same on this corner, just a framer. Just blend it into the previous color. Just have some breakaway ones. Just so everything matches. And then look, if you make a mistake or you don't like it, if it's a bit too harsh, look, you can just use a baby wipe and your painting will be underneath. So I think she's finished. So I've signed her in the bottom left hand corner. So you've learned how to create this sunset landscape acrylic painting. We've got this lovely glow of the horizon. We've got this lovely um, color change from warms to cools in our night sky. 
We've got the clouds on top, which match, which go from hot to cool in color using warm pastel colors. We've got this lovely mountain that's far off into the distance that you've learned how to do highlights to create realism. We've got these faraway tree lines that we've used pastel colors to push back darker bushes and trees to bring them forward using harsher colors and darker colors you've got this country road or country path with highlights and colors and we've got our darkened corners and a subject in the middle for the viewer to focus on so i hope you've enjoyed this country path painting tutorial i've enjoyed painting along with you guys at home don't forget to tag me at m Stuart paintings on instagram with your versions of the tutorial so i can shout them out and see them and don't forget to like and subscribe and thank you all for supporting the channel take care happy painting bye